Hi, my name is Brother Sean and this is part of the Rasta series and this is number six and we're looking at Rastas doing some spiritual stock taking. Why does Rastas have to go into his storeroom and do a spot stock check? Because if we don't, evaluate who we are and reawaken the heart to that inner knowing that we are a loved child of God. Then we go through this life with so much woundedness or conceit or maybe we fool ourselves into believing that we're okay and that we have no need to jettison baggage and to acquire new stock. So God said to Rastas, Rastas, it's time that you went into my storeroom and you dusted down everything I gave you because there's stuff there that I gave you that has not even been looked at, Rastas. They're out of date. And you've allowed that, Rastas. So I want you today to take everything off those shelves and see what you can salvage, Rastas. Because there's a famine on the way and you're going to need some stock. And Rastus says, does it have to be today, Lord? He said it should have been yesterday, Rastus. So let's do it. Let's get a moving. So Rastus picked up his bottom lip, blew hot and cold, and began dusting down. And in the dusting down, he realized, what a fool. I've had pilchards and cream there that would have done a lovely, a lovely pudding. Five years out of date. There's pilchards there and I love my pilchards. And I daren't open the can because they'll swim away. They're so mouldy and infected. Ten years out of date. And then there's that corned beef. Oh, I just love a corned beef sandwich with piccalilli. Fifteen years out of date. My God, what have I done? I've abused the gifts that I've been given. And Rastus takes a deep breath and he can hear God saying, Rastus, yes, yes. You squandered my gifts, but I forgive you, Rastus, and I want you to start afresh with me. Now let's clear these shelves, because I've got new stock ready for you, and that stock is going to fill you with goodness, Rastus. Okay, Lord, I'll do as you tell me. And this time I'll do it right. Oh no, Rastas. People say they'll do it right. And then when they get stuck into the minutiae of clearing out, they give in, they give up, they walk away. That's human nature, Rastas. Oh, not me, Lord. You know I'm committed. He said, yes, you should have been committed. That's the story for me and for you. We have been given wonderful gifts by God. Pearls of great price, nuggets. We've been given the learning. We've been given the gifts, the skills. And yet we whinge and we moan. We squander the wonderful gifts of life. And if you were to look at society as a whole, 
you could say society has squandered the gift of earth. Mankind has abused the gift of earth by pillaging the rainforests for greed. So now we come into our storehouse and in the presence of the company of heaven, we ask for the courage to look, to face our fear, to face our demons and not run away. And to be still in that presence of love and to know that whatever we need will be given to us. And God said to Rastas, don't you dare go through that door at the bottom with that flashing red light. Esmeralda, she lead you astray. Who's Esmeralda, Lord? Well, I'll put it this way. She was like you, but she remained still. And she squandered her gifts. She's so full of her own self that you just don't go near her. She has these self-pity parties. She's moaning, she's whinging. It's a wonder that woman ever draws breath. And Rasta says, Okay, Lord, I'll give Esmeralda a break. We need to take responsibility for our journey and get away from this mindset of being in a nanny culture. It's so easy, isn't it, when governments make new laws. The recent craze from the Olympics is that it was said that, and it's true, that cyclists who use the public highway should wear protection, such as a helmet, and the knee pads and the elbow pads, to protect them from danger. But that's common sense. Because if you're thrown off a bike by a car on a busy thoroughfare, a head injury, the head is such a sensitive organ, you can cause contusion, hematoma, swelling on the brain, unconsciousness, death. I was a nurse. But try telling that. Rastus knows better. But there was a news flash to say, oh, the government are thinking of making legislation to enforce people to wear helmets. We don't need that. What we need is for each child of God to mature and step into God's power and take responsibility for their faith journey and to stop being milk fed. Look what's happened with society per se down through the centuries with religion where religious leaders became so obsessed with power with notoriety they abused God's gifts and they abused the word of God to suit their ego and their agenda to control to control the mindset of the innocent when Francis of Assisi came on the route map in the 12th century, it was to pave a new beginning. It was to prepare a road where many ordinary men and women who weren't academic, who weren't well versed on Latin and the scholars, but they had lost heart with the church because their leaders were corrupt. And mankind, being mankind, we are human. We're full of great ideas. But it's delivering them. It's maintaining that commitment, that enthusiasm. We wane, we fall down, but we do not need legislation from church or state to enforce us into a pen where we can't breathe. And that's what's happened. And the children of God are in revolt. And that's why so many have left their church, their synagogue, their shul, 
their temple because they're choking to death on legislation. So Rasta says, Lord, I'm going to keep them shelves bare and I'm going to add what I need. And for the first time in my life, Lord, I'm going to take responsibility for my life. And he said, Rastus, there's no better man than you. 